I got news for you. Your mom lied to you. You have no great ideas. You suck, and you should just throw yourself in front of a bus. Hard Rock Lunch Box. Ah, uh, we have made it, everybody. Yeah. That is what is up. Welcome, welcome, welcome Thursday people to another uh, episode of the uh, Hard Rock Lunchbox, the less than impressive 401st first, first episode of the, of the Hard Rock Lunchbox. We made it, everybody. It is all uphill from here. How are we going to recapture the magic that was the first 400? I don't know, probably pretty you. Probably pretty pretty easily. I uh, I'm here. It's day day 37 of the pollen wars, and I'm here to tell you that the trees are winning. Absolutely. Oh man, I don't even know where to get started today. I uh, there's a lot going on in the world. Lot go- there's actually there actually is a lot going on in the world. Just in terms of uh, just fun, kind of local-looking news, uh, the largest uh, container ship to ever dock on the East Coast. It will be docking in East. It will be docking in New Jersey today. I think I would imagine the port of Newark is probably the only thing busy enough to do that. This thing is the size of the Empire State Building. I was watching video of it this morning, trying to get under the Verrazano Narrows Bridge. Like that was, I mean, not an issue, but. It was the closest I've ever seen a ship to hitting that goddamn thing. And I was like, wow. We need a lot of stuff, apparently, if we're bringing in a boat that big. You know, because Americans, like, we don't make anything anymore. We import everything. So we have to get it from somewhere. But uh, I thought that was uh, that was pretty cool. That was pretty interesting. I, um, I had considered talking about what's going on in New York City. Uh, spe- specifically uh, police related, but uh, every time I do anything that has anything to do with anything police related, I get so much hate mail. And as always, you can forward that hate mail right over to uh, Monty M O N T E over at CravingStrange.net, and I'll be sure and read every single one of them. I will say this: there's a case involving the state troopers in Louisiana. Uh, I think everybody should take some time and read. Uh, the man's name is Green. Uh, he was basically beaten to death by uh, state troopers, and then they lied about it for two years. So uh, I'm not going to talk about it here. It was actually shocking enough to me that it made me lose my breath to to listen to the audio and to watch some of the video that the AP released yesterday. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Correct, correct. The ship, the container ship, is named Marco Polo, which is funny being the largest ship to ever dock on the East Coast. Might be a little easy to find. All right, yeah, I'll play that game. So, uh, again, the thing about Louisiana, I'm not going to talk about it today, but I feel like it's important, and I feel like you should arm yourself with awareness about that kind of stuff because there is a lot of pushback constantly on what people are asking for when they're talking about change in the police department. And this is what they're talking about. They're not talking about uh, let's not pay for police. Like, I mean, some people are, but some people are idiots. So on both sides, on all sides. But uh, this is important, and I think it should be something that should be discussed. But not here. I'm really going to try and do a better job of not bringing my politics into the show so we can all hang out and have a good time just like always uh what else is going on in the world in the uh land of strangerhood tv there is a brand new episode of bacon is my podcast i did not get a chance to watch it this week i have been slammed at work like so slammed and like chris jericho body slammed kind of like that plus other stuff i've just been so busy i did not did not get a chance to watch it, which is going to sound funny later when I tell you what I actually did make the time to watch, just because I just needed to see for myself what the hell was going on. But we will address that later. Uh, This week, the top 20 is out again this morning, and it is the episode where I get kicked out of Facebook. (laughs) And I talk about how that's really not a big deal and how it doesn't really affect all that much. Uh, To be fair, uh, or for the record, or for full transparency, I have noticed since then that my... 
don't really have a followership. I don't know that that's the the. Um, I, I don't really know that that's that's the right word. But like uh, interactions, my interactions are in in the basement since I was on that Facebook ban. I put up posts that are normally like two, three hundred comments worthy. Uh, I did one the other day. I was talking about, um, oh, the incredible hypocrisy of uh, most anti-vaxxers, anti-maskers and stuff like that. Basically, Trump supporters, uh, who diehard Trump supporters who were spending all of last fall and last summer saying the CDC is is garbage and I'm not going to listen to the CDC at all. And then as soon as the CDC gave guidance saying that you could lift your masks, you didn't have to. They lifted the mask mandate in a lot of states. Um, everyone was like, yeah, man, the CDC, you should totally listen to the CDC. Like, I don't really care what your take on the CDC is. Like, it's not really important to me. Like, I am, and this sounds really dicky, but, like, I'm smarter than almost everybody I'm going to argue with on Facebook. And I don't know that I'm not smarter than all of them. Uh, but I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll bar it. I'll, I'll set the bar wherever. And the reality is most people that are arguing against the CDC, like, I wouldn't trust with a book report. You know what I mean? So, like, there is there is not a single scientist working at the CDC that is not smarter than everybody that I'm talking to about this kind of stuff on Facebook. So it just, like, you know, when when Johnny Shitbag from Alabama is like, oh, I don't think I'll lock the CDC. And I think I'm doing him justice in that accent, by the way. Like, I don't really care, man. Like, why don't you go back and start banging your sister, and I'll worry about what the CDC has to say. And, and that kind of stuff. But I really cannot stand the hypocrisy of like, oh, no, CDC is garbage. Eh? But you can't listen to CDC. Uh, uh. <laughs> and then uh, like, oh, no, CDC said I could take my mask off. So I'm going to walk right into this Lowe's or Ace Hardware or whatever that dickhead in Garden City just like walked into a hardware store and started arguing with the poor kid that's like, <sighs> never mind. I hate people. I hate people that ruin things. Uh, this place, New York, Long Island, specifically one of the most beautiful places on earth. Like I say all the time, it's one of the most beautiful places on earth, except for the 85% of people that are just absolute trash that live here. And if we could just somehow get rid of them, I think we'd probably be okay. But, you know, that's me, and that's my opinion. So. But anyway, so I was talking about the Facebook thing, and it's kind of a funny episode. Uh, as always, I, I recommend watching anything and all things on Stranger Hood TV because uh, we're really trying to build something up. Like uh, me, Mikey, and Jimmy are all donating content. Of course, everybody in Craving Strange is donating content to the page to try and build up listenership to kind of create some sort of hub of entertainment. You know, so the more people we can bring in, the more stuff there is. Like, I think I think it's a good idea. It's like creating a network and. You know, so you can just always stop by there. And I always try really hard that at the end of my top 20, I try and, you know, send you like you can. You, OK, so if you don't know how this works in YouTube at the end, you can do things that are like end cards or end credits or whatever. Uh, and you can send people to a playlist, a video, a site or some sort of combination of that. So generally speaking, I will send people to the top 20 playlist or I'll send them to the Bacon's My Podcast playlist or I'll send them to like the Will It Sound Good Acoustic playlist, but I can also send them to a video. So like usually if I'm talking about something that happened on, you know, like a particular video, I will send them to it. For example, or hopefully, uh, Chris Waterbury has done a new drum walkthrough tour thing that is available on Stranger Hood TV now. You should check it out. I will be taking this episode of the Top 20, which will air in two weeks. And at the end, if you watch all the way through, you will see a link to that very video. So it makes it super easy because we want to keep it all very incestuous. Not the penis and vagina kind of incest, but like, you know, video to video to playlist to video, that kind of thing. The good kind of incest. You know what I'm talking about. Ugh. Anyway, uh, ugh. oh, so um, I was recently just talking about people I hate, and this might surprise you, but there's a lot more of them than you would think, or maybe, maybe not. Uh, so, a buddy of mine had this uh, interaction. I was actually going to do a Hard Rock Lunchbox walkthrough, like the way Waterbury does it, but I'm not going to do that today, because basically, here's the back of the lunchbox, and that's it. I don't feel like doing anything else, so. Uh, but yeah, so my buddy of mine uh, ran into this situation, and anybody that works in an office situation, um, this is probably going to sound hella familiar, and I'm going to try and help you out, and help you define what this is. Okay. So... 
I work in tech, as you probably know. I write I write custom software um, for small companies. And what I really like about that job is that I get to do new and creative things with it. Like I wrote an entire system over the past two months to basically ask for the costs of something out of out of one system through another to change the language it was working in and then over to this other company. Jesus Christ with the fat under my arm. Although it's not as swiveling as much, I gotta stop being on camera. Like what is what is this? What what is happening here? Nothing. Nothing at all. It's not as swivelly as last week. I guess that's good. That must have been the five thousand uh what are those things? <laughs> Skull crutches I was doing just before you guys got here. Yeah. Oh, are we are we are we on the show? Oh, I was just working out, man. Okay, ninety nine, one hundred. All right, thank you, everybody. Um. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, the chat, the chat is acting up. Uh, Team Uppity, yes, the Earth is flat, and Coronas isn't real. All right, we'll get to all that in a second. So, I write code, and I get to do creative things. Uh, and sometimes when you're doing creative things. You are taking liberties with the code that are not like kind of standard stuff. Like, you ever try and go somewhere uh, and Google Maps is like, you know, take Jericho Turnpike to, you know, this way and go that way and all that other stuff. And you're like, I'm not taking those roads because this is when school gets out and those roads will be packed. So you take side roads and stuff like that. That's what I do. And when you do stuff like that, especially in code, you really have to document what it is because if somebody else has to fix that years later or months later or whatever, um, they have absolutely no idea what you're doing and why you're doing it. So it's important to kind of document in code. Even, even sometimes you have to document largely outside, like and have an actual document in tech. That is, that is pretty common. I I have done that five times in my life. Like I hate writing tech documents. I would I would rather I would rather pay somebody to just ramble. And, and, like, I would rather transcribe the first 20 minutes of this stupid show than write a tech document on code I just created. So I document a lot in code where I'll put like a comment and be like, I'm doing this here because I felt like it. Or it goes here and then this return. Like all that kind of stuff. It's important to document stuff. Uh, and, and I will tell you, like I've gone back to code that I've written 10 years ago and been like, what the hell was I thinking? Because I've learned new things and stuff like that. So, this like, or, like some some things didn't even exist, you know, ten years ago. It's like, God, this would have been so much easier. So it's important to do that. Um, it is also important to document things when you are dealing with either internal questionable kind of stuff, like anything that could ever involve like HR or anything like that. It's important to document those kinds of things. And it's also important to document transactions, especially complicated transactions. One of the one of the companies I work for does a lot of overseas transactions. They buy textiles from overseas and they sell it to like major online retailers in the states. And those transactions sometimes can last six to eight months long, from the time things are being woven overseas to the time they're actually sold and delivered so there's a lot of documentation that goes in there and the reason that's important because a lot of times like these big retailers will be like hey man we said this and then you'll look back through your notes you'll be like no you did not you said this and this is when we agreed to it and all that other stuff so email is super helpful in terms of documentation but when you're dealing with like contracts and stuff like that you kind of have to actually document stuff and the reason I'm saying all this is because this not only protects you but it also creates a situation where there's no, like, nothing's left to chance and there's no hostilities and there's no attitudes about, like, perception. Like, no, I remember it this way. Like, if I had a nickel for all the things I remembered that way, man, I'd have, like, bags and bags and bags of nickels. So I'm not relying on my memory for what happened yesterday. Do you know what I mean? Like, if it's not written down, it probably didn't happen. So... It's super important to do that. It's a really good work quality because if somebody's like, hey, man, can you check that purchase order? And you could be like, oh, yeah, man, they, no, they canceled item number three on that where they called in. Yes, yeah, Steve, I think it was Steve that called in and canceled that, stuff like that. Like, that is a super good quality. Like, that, to me, is an employee that you, like, you you dip in gold or, or duplicate 
Like in Mario 3D, like if you get the cherry, you duplicate. Like I would duplicate people that do that because they're a wealth of information. They are a real time information and 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 archivers like tribal elder levels of like remembering how it was back then. Like I don't know if you guys remember when James Comey Comey was fired from the FBI. The reason he was fired basically from the FBI is because he wrote his notes about conversations he was having with people in the White House so that he would have them in case he had to call upon them and he did and he got fired for it, which I don't recommend. So like but it's not because it's not that he got fired because he kept the notes because he got fired because the notes weren't what you know the narrative they were trying to say. So I had this situation with a friend of mine where he's doing all these things. He's doing all the right things and he gets called out for wasting time or or having way too much time available to document things fully. And I, you know, I use LOL a lot in text, but like I actually laughed out loud because the reason <laughs> that that um, the reason that it's funny to me that that particular call out it actually happened is the whole point of this top 20 today and a whole point about people I don't like and I don't like their existence and I would feel better if their existence didn't exist anymore, right? Like, just the full circle of it, like, exist, you're you're becoming a nuisance, and going around, like, now you're really bothering me, and now your existence is a problem, please don't exist anymore. Like, the full circle of existence would be good. Because what I realized is you take an incredibly sound business, like, tenant almost, like, documenting your work and then you complain about it now the only reason you would ever do something like that is if you have absolutely nothing else to complain about and here's here's where it comes in and here's the part there is this entire industry collection type of person I mean, they're they're so goddamn annoying. They are somewhere between efficiency experts and middle management and uh, idea guys, idea men. Probably named Bryce. There's usually a Stephanie in there. Absolutely a Sheila or two. And those people, their job in life is to comment on something else that's perfectly fine but they need to negative negatively frame it to justify their position and their existence right that'd be like if somebody tried to critique this show this show is so perfect it is beyond Perfection, Like, they would have to create a new word for everything runs perfectly here. There's never been any technical difficulties whatsoever. <laughs> we start on time. We run late. Right. So, like, this show could probably benefit from a Sheila or two, but we're not doing that. But the point of it is, like, if you, like, people that work in offices, like, do you ever run into people that tell you to change something that you're doing and you just feel it in your gut? That the only reason you have to change it is because they need to tell their boss that they suggested that you change this because, and that's it. There is no anything after because. They were just like, I'm going to ruin Amanda's day today. Like, just, that's it. And this translates out to people. You guys ever get a new banking app? Like, did your bank ever just send you a new app? Like, my goddamn bank sent me such a new app the other day, I had to re-register it for it. And they, the rocket scientists that they are, set it up through the app so that you had to enter all your information. It had to match 100%, and then they were going to send you a code via text so that you could confirm that it was you. Well, Guess what happens when your phone number associated with that account has been there for 10 years and it's probably a goddamn landline. (laughs) Ta-da! 
If you honestly think that there wasn't a Bryce or a Jason or a, or a Stephanie, probably an Amanda, or, oh, God damn it, all those names, ruining that situation like not one of these millennial dickwads even could figure out for a second that maybe somebody lived before they did and actually had a landline to address. Like, I had to call Kansas. Kansas, of all places, to get this fixed. There are adages that exist in this world, and they exist for a reason. Uh, one of them that seems incredibly uh, appropriate right now would be like, I don't know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like, I'm sorry you spent all your money going to, like, business school. But honestly, Toby, your ideas aren't all that impressive. And if all you are bringing to the table is move the login button over here, we don't need you. And you can leave me and all my buddies that are doing a good job alone because you are skimming off the till of our hard work. And that is the only reason your salary is being justified. So stop running off to the boss telling them about all the great ideas you have. I got news for you. Your mom lied to you. You have no great ideas. You suck. And you should just throw yourself in front of a bus. I'm not saying today and certainly don't do it on a bus that I'm on or the road that I'm in like a, like an off off to the side bus would be good, like a school bus. Like school buses, then the kids, like not on the way home, though, because the kids want to get home. But on the way to school, if a busload of kids hit you and they don't have to go take their math class, like that's the best excuse ever. Like, I'm sorry, Mr. Morrell, I couldn't take my math test today because we ran over uh, Bryce, whose idea was so stupid that I couldn't even log into my bank account. And that's why I wasn't here today, and I'm sorry. I'm tired. You guys want to hear some Beartooth? I know I do. It'll make me feel better. It's the lines on the box.